Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today we're taking a look at a new type of monitor, one that's just hit the market in 2019, and something many of you have been requesting. There are a few monitors out there that use this panel, but the one I have in for testing is the HP Omen X27, actually the first HP monitor I've reviewed, so that adds a bit of interest here too. The thing that makes this monitor special is its refresh rate. We're looking at a 1440p display, so the standard 2560 by 1440, but it pushes up to 240Hz for the first time. Of course, we've had 240Hz available with 1080p monitors for some time now, but 1440p hasn't been able to step up to this super high refresh podium until now with these modern panels. It won't be a surprise to many of you that 1440p at 240Hz requires a TN panel. These days, we do see some 1080p 240Hz panels using IPS and VA technology, but as 1080p 240Hz starts getting upgraded to better technology, TN is starting to hit 240Hz at higher resolutions. And really, this is somewhat of a comeback for TN at 1440p, given the vast majority of 1440p gaming monitors in the past few years have been released with either IPS or VA panels at up to 165Hz. What are the other key specs here? Well, 27 inch screen size, and of course it's flat, which is my preference for 16.9 monitors. One millisecond rated response times, not unusual for a TN, but we'll see how that fares later. Adaptive sync support with FreeSync 2 HDR, although no VESA display HDR spec, and a regular retail price of 650 US dollars. I have seen it as low as $500, but at $650, it is a premium product as you'd expect for something high-end. Aussies are looking at a $1,100 price tag. The most striking thing when you take the HP Omen X27 out of the box is its unique design. Lots of monitor companies these days stick with the basic pronged metal stand with a pillar, which is quite functional and looks good most of the time, but HP here has gone with distinctly their own aesthetic, which includes a thin rectangular stand pillar connected to a heavy square metal base. Personally, I think this looks awesome. Everything about the build exudes premium quality, as you'd expect from an expensive monitor. The stand is entirely metal. The seams as materials transition from one thing to another are extremely tight and well built. Plus the rear section with its triangular pattern looks fantastic, even if it's entirely plastic. As far as materials go, this is definitely one of the best built monitors I've seen. While in general the design is excellent, there have been some sacrifices to functionality. One is with stand adjustability. You do get a height adjustment, which is nice, plus the usual tilt capability, but due to the rectangular connection to the display, there is no swiveling or pivoting capability, so you can't use the monitor in a portrait orientation. There also doesn't appear to be VESA mounting support, so the included stand is what you are stuck with. Ports are also quite limited. We do get a two-port USB hub and an easy-to-access headphone jack, but there is just one display port and one HDMI input. That's good enough for a single PC and single console connection, but plenty of other monitors these days have three or four ports, which is what I'd have liked to see from this premium product. The other issue comes with the on-screen controls. Not only do we have a fairly chunky bottom bezel, the side bezels are fine here, but we also don't have a directional toggle or buttons along the bottom edge. Instead, the OSD buttons are actually found on the rear side, and to control them, you have to fumble and reach around the bottom bezel to find them. It's not a great control system, and I frequently found myself pressing the wrong button. HP's OSD itself is quite good. The menu is straightforward and includes you know, decent gamer features that we've seen from other monitor brands like cheat crosshairs, refresh rate displays, and controls for the single ambient lighting LED on the bottom edge. However, perhaps one missing feature is a backlight strobing mode that's not found here, although perhaps not as necessary with such a high refresh rate. Speaking of the refresh rate, let's talk about the combination of 1440p and 240Hz. We are getting adaptive sync here, so it works with AMD and NVIDIA GPUs, plus low frame rate compensation as you expect from a modern gaming monitor. But the big jump here is naturally from a maximum refresh rate of 165Hz, like we used to see with 1440p monitors, up to 240Hz. If you're thinking you can run modern AAA games at above 165fps in 2019, even with a GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, yeah, think again. While the 2080 Ti is undoubtedly a high-end GPU, in the most demanding titles, you're looking at between 100 and 140 FPS using ultra settings at 1440p. That allows you to max out a 1440p 144Hz display most of the time, but it isn't going to make a 240Hz display worth it. So if you're the sort of gamer that plays titles like Borderlands 3 and Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, upgrading to 240Hz isn't going to make much sense until we have next-generation 
generation GPUs. But where 240Hz does make sense at 1440p is with competitive games. 1080p 240Hz has been the gold standard here for a while now, but at 1440p you can often still run these titles at super high frame rates while benefiting from the added spatial information from the higher resolution. If you do have a high-end rig, I'm talking RTX 2080 Ti and Core i9 1900K, you can quite often play games like Rainbow Six Siege, Fortnite on medium settings, Overwatch, Rocket League, those sorts of titles at or above 200 FPS at 1440p. This is where a 240Hz monitor gives you improved clarity and smoothness over 144Hz. And while the difference is subtle, the more I've used 240Hz over the last few years, the more it feels like an upgrade over 144Hz in these games. For anything fast motion, more Hz is better. Future proofing aside though, having a 1440p 240Hz monitor really is only in the realm of super high end gaming rigs. If you don't have a fast gaming CPU like Intel's 8700K or 9900K, paired with a top end GPU like the RTX 2080 Super or preferably the RTX 2080 Ti, at least in 2019, 1440p 240Hz probably isn't for you. In a few years time, hopefully the requirements will drop down a bit like 1080p 240Hz has over time, but for now, it's a high-end thing. So how does the HP Omen X27 perform at 1440p and 240Hz? Well, as you probably would expect from a TN panel, it does fare pretty well in response times. There are four overdrive modes available, but the first two, level one and level two, aren't worth using given they don't get the best out of the panel. These modes aren't terrible given response times in the five millisecond range with minimal overshoot, but we can do better. Level three is the optimal mode for this monitor. Here we are getting fast performance as you'd hope from a TN. The overall greater grade average is just 3.13 milliseconds. And you can tell from the visual charts that most transitions are are extremely quick at 240 Hz, some as low as 1.2 milliseconds. Dark level performance is very good, so there's no smearing there either, not that this is unusual for a TN panel. The best part comes with refresh rate compliance. 90% of transitions are within one millisecond of the refresh rate window, which is a tight 4.17 milliseconds when refreshing at 240 Hz. This means that smearing isn't an issue even at 240 Hz, as the monitor is generally fast enough to transition its pixels before it has to refresh the screen for the next image. What we're left with is true 240Hz performance and the extremely responsive low blur experience that provides. Error rates are also very good here, no issues to speak of, you won't see inverse ghosting at this refresh rate. The fastest available overdrive mode, level 4, does push the average greater grade transition down to 1.77 milliseconds, but it does so at the expense of high levels of overshoot. 36% of transitions had overshoot above 15%, many transitions above 20%, which does cause inverse ghosting trails in fast motion, and this isn't a mode I'd recommend. Level 3 is definitely the overdrive mode to choose, and this holds up well throughout the refresh rate range. Even if you are gaming at 120Hz using Adaptive Sync, performance is still excellent at a 3.16 millisecond average response time. Overshoot does increase the slower the refresh rate is, increasing from an average error of 3% at 240Hz to 7.9% at 60Hz, but none of these refresh rates exhibit much inverse ghosting, so that's why I'd set this monitor to level 3 and forget about it. Even performance at 60Hz is great for console gaming. How does the Omen X27 stack up to other monitors? Well, looking at the greater grey average, we're right in the zone for TN monitors between 2 and 4 milliseconds. The Omen X is a step up from the Viotech GFT 27DB I reviewed earlier this year, which is a 1440p 144Hz monitor, although we aren't moving the needle much in terms of delivering faster than usual response times. Not that this is necessary as TN technology has been fast enough for 240Hz refresh rates at 1440p for a while now, it's just about bringing up to speed other areas of the display like the scaler. We also see performance very close to Gigabyte's Aorus KD25F which is one of the ultra fast 0.5 millisecond class 240Hz panels at 1080p. So at least for response times, we're equivalent to 1080p monitors at this refresh rate. Dark level performance is obviously not an issue for TN monitors, that's only a consideration for VA. And while refresh rate compliance isn't chart topping, anything above 70 to 80% is very good. With 91% compliance from the Omen X27, this is more than enough for an excellent 240Hz experience, and you won't get much better from other options.
The average error chart isn't the most useful in our reviews, but what we do see here is that the latest generation 1080p 240Hz panel used in the KD25F, which has 0.5 millisecond class response times, is marginally faster than the 1440p 240Hz panel used here. That's because while both options have 3 millisecond response time averages, the KD25F does so at a lower error rate. This doesn't mean much in practice as in my opinion they offer an equivalent experience, but for those that are interested in panel technology, it seems that 1080p still has a slight lead here. As I mentioned earlier, inverse ghosting is a non-issue with the HP Omen X27 at its optimal overdrive mode, although the headroom here is absorbed at lower refresh rates, which have increasing but still manageable overshoot. And even at 60Hz, this is still a fast monitor, with response times still around that 3 millisecond mark, which is impressive and makes the monitor great for adaptive sync use, as we know ghosting remains largely unchanged throughout the refresh rate range. What about input lag? Well, the HP Omen X27 so far is the fastest monitor I've tested with functionally zero input lag. When that's combined with such a high refresh rate and quick transitions, we are getting five milliseconds of latency between the monitor receiving an input and fully displaying it on the screen. That's incredible and leads to chart topping performance by a decent margin. All of this does come at a higher than usual power consumption for a 27 inch monitor. Power usage is more than 50% higher than the Viotech GFT 27DB and other TN panels, which may concern you, or it might not given we're still below 40 watts here. Color performance is surprisingly excellent from the HP Omen X27 II. This is a wide gamut monitor, however, even when measuring against sRGB, we see good things. For starters, grayscale performance is very good out of the box, with just a delta E average of 1.27. As usual, we're targeting below 2.0 here, so this is very accurate. The CCT curve is also decent, and while my unit was tinted very slightly towards the yellow end out of the box, this is a nitpick really, and you won't get anything better outside of a full calibration. Saturation performance is affected mostly by the unclamped gamut, but this only delivers moderately inaccurate results due to oversaturation. There are no other issues here. Yes, we do see delta E averages above 2.0 in saturation, but surprisingly in color checker, this is below 2.0, which is very good. This allows it to deliver extremely strong factory calibration performance compared to other gaming monitors, which typically report in with Delta E's between 3.0 and 4.0. Were an sRGB clamp available in the settings, no doubt this would be one of the most accurate gaming monitors you can buy from the factory. There isn't much room to tweak things further in the OSD menu. Not only is this monitor quite accurate out of the box, but the color controls are quite fiddly and hard to get fine control over. I just leave this monitor in its default configuration, which includes contrast at 80, gamma set to 2.2, and a sharpness level at level 4. After a full calibration, we can improve things further to deliver excellent color performance. Grayscale was already a non-issue, though this has been tightened up slightly. It's in the saturation and color checker graphs where we see the advantages of the color profile, which allows us to display both sRGB and P3 images properly in supported applications. Here with sRGB performance, we see Delta E averages around the 0.5 mark, thanks to 100% sRGB coverage. Wide gamut P3 performance isn't as strong, although it's not bad compared to monitor that have no wide gamut ability. The main problem is my unit only had native 87% coverage of P3, which drops to 85% when calibrated. So when you look at saturation sweeps, for example, yes, the average is decent, but top end performance is clipped as the very outer edges of P3 cannot be displayed. There are a variety of reasons. You probably wouldn't want a TN monitor for creative work, but below 90% coverage of P3 is, I guess, one item on the list. Brightness in the SDR mode is mid-tier, although anything above 300 nits is bright enough for most environments. Where this panel really suffers is with viewing angles, which are poor. There is a significant color shift at horizontal and vertical off angles. Unless you view this monitor from front on at the perfect angle, you run into trouble with desaturation. Even with this new generation of 1440p TNs, yeah, the same TN viewing angle issues are still present. The contrast ratio is also quite weak at just 833 to 1 when calibrated. Blacks just don't get very black here, and while there are no major backlight bleed issues, at least with my unit, if you're viewing this monitor in a dark environment, you'll notice that blacks are more like a dark gray. Again, common for all but VA and OLED monitors, but it is a downside of TN technology. As for uniformity, pretty decent here, small amount of fall off along the left edge, but other than that, a uniform experience through the center region. Seems HP are using a quite a quality panel as you'd hope given its price tag. The HP Omen X27 is also an HDR capable monitor. Surprisingly though, it hasn't received any display HDR badges, although it does come with FreeSync 2 HDR support. So let's see how it fares in the checklist. 
This is a curious monitor in that it gets halfway there with each of the three main pillars of HDR. For brightness, the monitor can sustain 450 nits easily, but can't push up to 600 nits. For contrast, we do get some local dimming with 16 edge lit zones, but we don't have the full array or high zone count necessary for an excellent experience. And while the monitor is wide gamut capable, around 87% P3 coverage falls just short of the 90% we ideally want to see here as a minimum. Where this leaves us in practice is an HDR experience that's better than SDR, but only slightly better and really not close to the full HDR experience you get from a proper HDR monitor. Take brightness for example. For small details such as bright light in a dark scene, we do get up to 470 nits, but we don't get the piercing 1000 plus nits of the best HDR panels. The absolute best contrast ratio we can achieve in the HDR mode is around 6000 to 1 with the Omen X, which admittedly is more than six times higher than the panel's default SDR contrast without local dimming, but that's not that impressive against even some semi-HDR monitors like the LG 32UL650 with Display HDR600 certification. And in our single frame contrast tests, again the Omen X falls behind the pack due to its low zone count. I wouldn't completely rule out using the HDR mode here as it does provide a minor advantage over SDR and the large local dimming zones aren't too noticeable during regular gaming usage, but the HDR experience here isn't nearly as good as true HDR monitors which are much more expensive. I just don't think TN is really a good technology for HDR. But let's forget about HDR performance here because I don't think you'll be buying the Omen X27 based on HDR. What you'll be interested in is the combination of a 1440p resolution and 240Hz refresh rate. That's the star of the show here and it's always exciting and interesting to test these sorts of new panels and new technologies. Overall this is a very good gaming monitor. There are some issues brought about from using a TN panel but these are nothing unusual for this panel type and really everything else is excellent. Response times are fast enough to keep up with the 240Hz refresh rate with a bit of room to spare, so even though we are getting an increase to resolution over older 1080p 240Hz monitors, nothing much has changed as far as performance is concerned. This is a really quick monitor that delivers a top class, highly responsive gaming experience. HP has also delivered excellent adaptive sync support, including tight response times throughout the refresh range, plus virtually zero input lag. Everything here makes this one of the fastest and most responsive monitors I've ever tested, which is especially exciting given we're getting this with a higher resolution than just 1080p. Color performance is also very strong from the factory, surprisingly so for a gaming monitor that doesn't boast about factory calibration anywhere on its website. A few minor oversaturation issues can be easily corrected with a software profile, but even if you don't use a profile, this monitor has great colors. Most of the downsides are standard TN stuff, poor viewing angles and a weak contrast ratio, a standard and really the key trade-off for elite performance with a TN. If you game in a dark room, the higher than average black levels may annoy you, and while I really love the design and build quality, there are some annoyances there too, like a hard to use on-screen menu and lack of VESA mounting support. But most of those issues to me really aren't that significant. If you want the absolute fastest 1440p monitor on the market, there are some trade-offs to be made. My bigger concern is more to do with the price and whether you should buy a 1440p 240Hz monitor at all. So let's talk about price first. The good news for HP is the Omen X27 is much cheaper than their only other competition with the same specs, the Lenovo Legion Y27 GQ25. Lenovo's offering is an eye-watering $1,000, although it usually sells for $900, with the Omen X27 priced at $650, not sure why you would spend the extra money on Lenovo's option. However, as far as 1440p displays go, $650 is still quite pricey. This is definitely something for the ultra high-end gamers. I don't think there's much point going down the 1440p 240Hz route yet, unless you have a high-end rig with a Core i9-9900K and RTX 2080 Ti, because realistically, that's the sort of hardware you need to drive games at this resolution and frame rate. Most other people I feel would be better off with LG's 27 GL850, especially if your hardware can't max out a 1440p 144Hz display yet. It's still a lightning quick monitor in terms of response times and input lag, but it has much better viewing angles and a wider color gamut than the HP Omen X27, thanks to LG's Nano IPS technology. It's also $150 cheaper comparing regular retail prices, which at $500 for the 27 GL850 I think is more justifiable for a high-end 1440p high refresh display. But don't get me wrong, 
The HP Omen X27 is a really great monitor that delivers excellent performance. It's just one of those more niche offerings for a super high-end audience. There's definitely a place for it in the market and I'd love to see new panel tech like this, but before you run out and buy one, I'd strongly think about your PC's hardware and how you want to game. I guess that's it for this one. As always, at the end of our videos, you can do all that usual YouTube stuff. There's a subscribe button down there. There's the like button. I think there's also a bell icon that gives you notifications or something like that. And uh, yeah, if you want to support the channel directly, you can check out our merch store where the Happy Unboxing stuff is still on sale. This is still a limited edition item though, won't be around forever. We also have our Patreon page if you want to chat with us in our exclusive Discord. When you sign up, you get access to that. And yeah, that's it. I'll catch you in the next one.